Hella Black episode 74. You know, we got a great one in store for y'all. On we talk organizing and political education outside of the academy and organizing spaces. Um, this is a challenge to anyone that's listening to, you know, step your game up and don't get comfortable in the work that you're doing. Be realize outside you're with as, the shit. Yeah, come on. Realize you're not as close to your politics as you think you are. I don't give a fuck, bro. Like, this is, you know, as we keep putting more intention to this shit, watch, bro, the power gonna elevate. I'm sorry, nigga, we got a ring lights and shit up in here. Niggas ain't never seen it. We went from recording Rod Studio with two mics and 17 niggas to, to White Dave, to Snake's f- Pit, to a warehouse, nigga, a fucking <laughs> container in a warehouse, to Jake's living room. Come to on, hear, bro. to hear, man. This is what Shout you call the struggle, growth, growth, exponential growth, expeditiously. <laughs> Come on, it took us seventy four episodes to. Well, not it didn't take us seventy four episodes. This is episode seventy four, but the elevation has been exponential, like you said. Yeah, if you listen Over to the first time, episode, me second episode, third episode, nigga, it sound like we was recording. I don't know. Somebody said oh, some, some of the bugs. podcasts. Some of the podcasts be sounding like you'd be recording on the moon. That's we got a, we got a producer in the corner over there. We have a director's chair. You know, it's get your merch. We in here, yeah. But get your fucking merch. Pay up. Patreon dot com slash Hell Black Pod. You feel me? That coffee mug. You feel me? That black coffee. You feel me? No integrated coffee, nigga. That real black coffee. We ain't talking about no cream, nigga, because cream make that coffee not as strong. Great. Great simile or, or a metaphor for integration. Nigga, what? When you integrate. The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> when you integrate something, oh it makes you weaker. Oh, my God. Nah, that's oh, a Malcolm quote. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hella Black, episode 74. You feel me? Shout out to all the niggas watching on YouTube, man. You feel me? Rocking. Great video content coming. So, fuck with our YouTube, for real. Poke it to your TV, nigga. Everybody got the YouTube app, so. Yeah. Fuck with us, man. Watch on your phone. SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, you feel me? And if you want extended content, go to our Patreon. Patreon.com slash HellBlackPod. We got extended content, video content. Dope content. And, you know, if you've been listening to Hell of Black, or if you're a new listener, pay the fuck up. Especially if you're white. If you're not right black, now. pay up. Any of your credit card information right now. Patreon.com slash HellBlackPod. Don't black art and black content and black labor for free. Nah. Pay up. Pay up. You know like what? I, real. You know what, bro? We'll get Black Twitter Twitter to fucking investigate your ass. Get <laughs> paying, bro. You know Black Twitter. They investigate. <laughs> I wanna I wanna take the time to acknowledge that this will be a pivotal moment in Hella Black. Because whenever we decide to do something again, whenever it's our second time at something, we always elevate it. Whether it's our one year hiatus from actually recording the podcast, whether it's um getting back on the Patreon tip and going hard with that, or and now it being the video, it's Thanks. over. This video shit is about to. Be, I can't wait till y'all see. By the time this is out, y'all have already seen the first episode, episode seventy three, which oh, has yeah. video. It's about telling y'all. It's heat. This is the. This is the moment of change for us. This is where we yeah. make the shift, my nigga. Yeah. I can't wait. So for before you log into your Netflix, nigga, <laughs> log in the hell with black and tap the fuck in with us for real, for real. But you know we got a great episode again. You know we just coming with that heat in quarantine, honestly. Niggas are actually really been, you know, creating three, three, four episodes a month. Yeah. Throughout this whole social distancing and it's unprecedented time. So I'm proud of yeah. the work we put in, you feel me? Not to say that productivity is what folks should be striving should, is, yeah. you know, what folks should be striving for Facts. right now. Not to say that that's the mark of whatever success. quote unquote success, especially during the pandemic is. But um I think you and I have taken advantage of our schedules. And the little bit of free time that we do have as a result of the shelter in place. And, you know, this is a result of it. Quality content um, via Hella Black Pod. Yes, Lord. So, as always, without further ado, drum roll, please. Black Joy, bruh. Sometimes, you know, we was talking about this a second ago. I'm like, 
Yeah, I had joy, but was it hella joyous, bro? Because I'd be depressed sometimes. <laughs> and sometimes it's like, yeah, it was for sure, like, centered in, rooted in an experience of joy and, like, trying to create that intentional space to, you know, chill and not have, or just have a good time type shit, you know? I was watching an old episode. I think it was, like, episode 37. It was a, it was an episode that we did on video, and I ended up watching um, far enough to 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 see... Or to to listen to the to Black Joy moment on it, yeah. And for me on that episode, I was talking about when I when I had flew to New York and um, got a chance to link with my sister and with my aunt and uncle and some of my cousins. And I think while Black Joy on Hella Black has become somewhat just like like a regular segment, yeah. And I think um, something that we just kind of do and don't really think about. Like I think what I'm gonna try to do now with with, with hella with, with Black Joy is I'm gonna try to like immerse myself in the moment that I'm talking about so I can actually feel the joy again. That's something I've been trying to practice in therapy, yeah. right? Because when I was able to talk, when I heard myself talking about, you know, seeing my sister, going to breakfast with my sister, and seeing my nephew for the first time, and going out to dinner with my aunt, uncle, and my cousins, that shit filled me up. I'm like, wait, so this was I like this wasn't just something I was just talking about in Pat. And I don't think that's and I think that's the norm for the for yeah. the Black Joy section. Like niggas really talking about something that brought them some joy. Um, but like even my body, like I was talking, like my voice sounded really like I was happy, but my body language wasn't really there. So I'm like, all right, like I was talking about it, but I wasn't immersing myself into like the feeling. Really trying to like bring yourself back to that experience, you know and step back into the moments. You feel because niggas like, do that with anxiety. Yeah. Niggas are able to if you if you feel something, like you feel this? me. So I think yeah, what you were saying is important. To, I'm I'm gonna actually take that into my own life. <laughs> like, we should do actually, that, bro. Like those moments of joy, like all right, how did you feel? Type shit. Not even like I know therapy should be like you know when I'm trying to like understand my own anxiety and where it's coming from. I try to map it, map it to a situation that happened, map it to what happened earlier. Maybe it was to you know some childhood trauma type of situation. You feel me? So you can definitely do the same thing with your joy. Yeah. Like, all right, yeah, I experienced this. This is what it felt like. This is, you know, like I felt the sun, you know what I'm saying? Like all those different type of like experiences that you actually feel. You know but even I mean? think about the times in which you talk about why we do black joy. Like, oh, it's important to find joy in the midst of all this shit. It's important. You know, we always we tend to talk about heavy stuff on the podcast. Yeah. Like, let's take some time to like cultivate some yeah. positive feelings. So I'm like, all right, Facts. like niggas know the intention behind it, but like let's put the like let's be more conscious of that intention. Yeah. So to throw that out there and I hope with our listeners you know when we say you know share your black joy moments and niggas really mean that share it with us yeah. you can share it with if whatever community you got you know um, and I think when you do that really take the time to practice feeling how you felt in that joyous moment like yeah. in the present when you're sharing it with somebody or if you're just thinking about it with, to yourself that's some game right there so you want to tell us what your, what your joy was <laughs> <laughs> well now that I'm <laughs> Now that I'm stepping myself back into that situation, it was a sunny day. <laughs> come on, come Blue with skies, it. you feel me? My calves was kind of hurting. <laughs> nah, but we went. <laughs> we went on a hike, you feel me, up in the fire trail. You know, that was always good to get up there. And I don't know, for me, I've always been going up to that spot probably the past eight, nine years, or even in high school, to be honest. Um, and just being able to like reflect up there, some shit like I'll go by myself and of course, you know, go with friends and homies and shit. But something about like being up in a higher place, you feel me, and you're able to like look down type of situation where it's a view, you're like it's able to center me in a different way. Like, okay, yeah, all that shit going on down there, but like right now I'm in this moment and it's peaceful. You feel me? So like how do I keep that peace from this moment, from this view, from that outlook? And it kinda just, you know, it changes your perspective on shit. Like, all right, yeah, all this shit is going on, but I, I still found peace. Like, all right, I might be struggling when I'm down there sometimes, you know what I mean? Or like going through my stress, my anxiety, but right now I'm able to like reflect on that. Um, so yeah, we went on a hike and that was that was just a good good time to get out, you feel me, and stay away from other people. Stay away from other people's fucking dogs. If you white, put your dog on a motherfucking leash. If you black, put your dog on a leash. Like, yeah, you, just in general. Dog but on, just put your dog on a leash. Put your dog on a fucking leash. <laughs> but I, I would say black people are more respectful with their dogs. Like a black person have their dog, they gonna call it over to them. A lot of people just want their dogs to run wherever. Yeah. But, sorry. Besides the fact, Joy was hiking, <laughs> getting out in the sun. You feel me? Good company. And Ain't it wild how, I, I don't know what it is. Because, like, niggas have, you know, you talk about going to this spot for at least a decade now. But I get the same feeling every time I go up there. Yeah. 
And maybe that's why I keep going back. <laughs> but I also was like, I used to associate that trail with stress too, because we have used to have to run it for uh, when I was playing rugby. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, you know, it's like that stress mode of thinking about, all right, yeah, I'm back in this season. You know, niggas is competing for a time and shit. You know. So I had to remove that certain aspect from the trail and like almost refine it again. You feel me? Like yeah. develop a different sense of meaning because. I'm not running up it in 12 minutes like I used to. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's just not going to happen. You know, so really having to re refigure out, like, how it works best for me. Bro, and it's for those in the Bay Area who are fam- excuse me, familiar with the trail he's talking about, uh, Strawberry Cane, which is right behind uh, Memorial Stadium. At, is it still called Memorial Stadium? Yeah, they call it Kabam for a second, then Kabam, I think. Well, you know, yeah, well. Behind the football stadium at UC Berkeley, <laughs> um, it's a trail that a lot of folks like to hike. It's, I've been going probably like once a week now since the shelter in place. And every time I go up there, I'm still fucking like, uh, my breath is taken away. It's hella beautiful. And it is wild how just like being up there, you feel like you're in a different place. And for yeah. me, it always like, it's this, this feeling of peace. And... Uh, I guess, yeah, I kind of be feeling like shit just going to be all right, to be honest. Bro, you see them big ass trees and, you know, you be thinking like, damn, that tree been there for I think it's like a step out, it's years, like a break out the, out the illusion, bro. Like yeah. out the, you know, quote this unquote matrix. Warp, yeah. It's like, wait, this is, you know. Like, nigga, birds are still chirping, bugs are still flying, slugs are still slugging and You shit, just like. exist and there is no goal but to walk. Yeah. Like that's, and just to see beauty, to walk in it and, and indulge in the beauty, like that's the only goal. Bro, and it's just wild, you feel me? It's like, you know, we in West Oakland right now and then. You could literally see West Oakland from up there and shit. And it's just like two different realities, bro. It's like you go up there and the the air is clean. It just smells so much more pure. And then you go down here back here, you know, concrete jungle, whatever you want to call it. You know what I'm saying? And it's different. Yeah, thousand percent. <laughs> the air isn't good, as good, you know. So it's, yeah. it's good to. I think that's one of the lucky reasons you feel me. We have being able to live out here too. Like we have access, nigga, to hikes, bro, to fucking mountains, mountains and shit. California, Bay Area, yeah. California, you feel me? Oakland, Berkeley, nigga. This shit is really actually, it's beautiful, nigga. Free the land first and foremost, but this shit beautiful. Yeah. But, yeah. What about your black joy? Um, I met with a mentor of mine earlier today, uh, and his name is Miko. And it's wild because he's a mentor of mine. Probably my, I don't know what, what, for the he's probably my mentor for the least amount of time as in comparison to all my other mentors right like when i think about my older cousins yeah. my uncles or like folks that i've known since i was a child that have like you know helped mow me and whatnot coaches um i met miko in 2016 and i'm we, we linked up today it's so like I'm, i could count on both hands how many times i've probably seen him in real life you yeah. know what i'm saying but when i think about or when i've how many times i've seen him you know face to face in person yeah um when i think about the impact that he's had on me it's like i've known him my whole life and it's probably because we just met at a pivotal time in my life you know what yeah. i'm saying um no, i feel that like yeah i was turning yeah like four years ago when i met him um and we met today and we just we, when we get together we just be talking and he really likes to listen like it's I be trying to be conscious of how much i talk when i'm with other people so i don't talk about myself as much and you know create the space for them to tell me about that shit Just like Try to have a healthy balance When I'm talking to people And just be aware right But like He literally Just likes to listen Yeah um, And it's something That I hella appreciate About him And he listens With intention And uh, We were talking today And he just asked me How I was doing and shit And like Throughout the conversation He just like I can't remember What exactly He said Or what, what the context Of the conversation Was to lead it To him saying this But I can remember How it made me feel and he just told me, like, no matter what, he always going to be proud of me. And I don't know why today that resonated with me. Right? I have people tell me they're proud of me all the time. But it's like when I've accomplished something. You know what I'm saying? Or like, can't just be like the general, like. <laughs> like, I ain't did shit. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Like, that he know of in the last, you know what I'm saying? Since the last time we talked, which is like two or three weeks ago when I seen him in passing, right? But for him to just ask me how I'm doing and for us to talk. And he's just like, hey, I want to let you know. I'm going to always be proud of you. No matter what. Um, and I think. Uh, on the podcast a lot we talk about you know being valued for what we do and you know people loving you for what you can contribute to their lives or you know how how successful you have been yeah. and that's just that's been a lot of 
that's caused a lot of stress for me. It's like I always have to produce, produce something. Pro, pro, nigga, whether I'm producing something, whether I'm providing, providing yeah. for people, like that just puts a lot of pressure on me. You know like, what I'm saying? I, yeah. I don't think it's something that is talked about a lot. But for somebody to tell me, like, nigga, whether you're not producing nothing or you're not providing shit for people, I'm always be proud of you. That was something that made me just hella happy, bro. Like, for sure. Like, I'm feeling it right now, just thinking about the shit. That's what's um, up. So, yeah, shout out Miko. Um, that was my black joy brought to me by a non black person. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was. You Would know. you look at that? Well, man, <laughs> not all people. <laughs> what they think that you say? Oh, shit. But yeah, I hope y'all find some black joy. You know, if you fuck with us on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, y'all should share y'all black joy moments with us. I would love yeah. to share some black joy. Like, yeah, drop you know, it on the Patreon. You feel me? Drop those comments. Let us know about your black joy. You feel me? Post about it. You know, tag us at Hell Black Pod. You feel me? We'll retweet it. You feel me? So tap in with the black joy. Share your moments. You feel me? And let's, let's cultivate that joy. You feel me? In our lives. In the community and you know also cultivate that shit online you feel me where people can we can encourage people to step into their joy you feel me i think that shit's important as always but especially you know times like this but yes sir we got a good episode in store today per usual oh, yeah that's what they say that's <laughs> some might be better than others yeah it was funny though <laughs> I was thinking about that one episode that just never made it out. It came up in my when I was too long. <laughs> we was in New York too long, and then you know, so, some. <laughs> I I kind of remember what you talk about, but I also don't. Yeah, we, we'll talk about that off. <laughs> 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 I, I remember Maya was there. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> like, actually, we should probably not. Uh, that was the one episode. I don't know why. But when I was trying to find a file, it came up. I was like, oh, shit, it's just still in the files. It's still. <laughs> what this means. But we like, still have good episodes, but we try to be intentional. That's. I think niggas have grown as podcasters, too. Like, we don't be drinking no more on the pod. Because niggas have grown comfortable with, like, you know, just getting together. Yeah. And just speaking. Because I was watching the episode. Like I said, I was watching an old episode. I'm like, why? Like, I was talking and you would just. Take a sip of Patron like every two minutes. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. This is what we was doing. Oh, we this would is get wasted. Nuts. We would get blended. We bro. were going to, <laughs> we were going to live shows and like, like it was drink champs or some shit. <laughs> and I think it's important for us to you know fucking combat or you know combat the ways in which people think po- folks that you know the way political education can be presented. You know what I'm saying? I think yeah. that was a f- super that, important. Yeah, it just showed you like we just regular. Yeah. We still drink, you know. I still might have a call. I mean, we still but drink on the pod, but like we were we a bit, like by forty five minutes in, we would definitely be drunk. Yeah, but like, but I also think that was a product of nigga. Like, we was also super. I mean, we still is super busy, but that was we, at a time when niggas would get off work and like catch Bart, nigga. We would be so anxious and stressed out from like you trying just to leave. make this happen. We yeah. would actually have to drink, or we would the pod wasn't gonna happen because we'd have to Period damn near like point. reset from what we was just doing. Like niggas would come from a. A five o'clock meeting, hop on Bart and have to make it to, you know, youth radio or some shit at five thirty to record. And then yeah. you only have an hour recording time type of situation. So you gotta get out everything you you do and you have to be like literally like you walk in to the door, that pressure sit off. in the chair, hit record. That's some of those older episodes you might not know that those are some of the, the backstories behind that shit. But I think ever you know, ever since we got some gear, man, shout out you feel me, Egg Pay nigga, shout out to our supporters, bro. Like it's been a different situation. Niggas are able to create intake, under the bro, conditions can, that they would like to. Period. Like well, now, you know, you know, we in the studio, man. We got this light set up, nigga. We in the comfort. You feel me? I'm happy. The crib, bro. man. This shit. I'm happy. It's right a blessing, now. bro. And I just, you know, I think I'm just blessed, bro. Like we're blessed, bro. We have a lot of supporters. Obviously, like nothing compared to you know some of these big ass podcasts and shit. But I'm I'm very grateful for the niggas who've been fucking with us from the beginning, bro. Like, niggas who believed in us, bro, and helped support us, bro. Niggas helped support us monetarily and shit to get gear to, you know, make sure this shit shakes. So, if you patron and shit and you've supported us, like, this shit, that shit really mean a lot. Because it's literally helped change the way we record yeah. and how we create. And I think you're getting better content because of it. Yeah, most dev. So, we got a good episode. <laughs> More of the story, nigga. We got a good episode coming. Yeah, this, the conversation we're going to have today stems from some thinking that I've been doing over the last like month or so as a result of me trying to check myself on my politics um and then more recently a conversation that I had yesterday so 
we're going to be diving into political education outside of the academy and outside of organizing spaces. And I, I don't know if Twitter is like separate. I think Twitter is like I mean, even maybe Twitter the, is a like, combination of yeah. both of those things, but also something separate at the same time. Yeah. I mean, it's for sure like there's a certain subset of Twitter that's like a, you know. Twitter is woke, an organizing space. Quote, and it's an academy. Twitter, it's yeah. a digital type of organizing space. It's a place where niggas is using these words that are, you know, usually being learned from the academy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like a intellectual space in some ways, I would say. Right. Yeah. Um, but a place that isn't always accessible, even though Twitter is supposed to be, a, you know, a more accessible type of platform. It isn't. The words that are being used aren't always accessible. You feel me? Niggas ain't really going in to teach. Some people aren't even going in to learn type of situation. You feel yeah. Me? What what I'm hoping comes from this conversation is that you know both you and I can call one another in and like raise the bar on what our standard is um, for political education. Yeah. And also that yeah, folks can do like our listeners can do the same and realize like I think it's so easy to get caught up. I've fallen victim to this too. It's so easy to get caught up in, you know, what you are doing that you don't think about what you're not doing. You know what I'm saying? I think so. some of us get so caught up in what we are doing that we start to think that we're closer to the politics that we preach than we really are um, just because we've doing memorized work. the theory at, like yeah. the back of our hands or we doing like, yeah. you know, some really good work. Not to discount, not to, you know, yeah. downplay the work that we do. But, um, you know, I just think there's, opportunities for more growth and i have a recent example which lets me know that there is opportunity for growth right so there's a situation where you know a family member of mine had tweeted some shit um that that was like hella misogynistic yeah um, that was misogynistic and somebody brought it to my attention um and when i called when i reached out to my family member and called them in on it you know he through our conversation, I realized that I was like failing this nigga as someone that's supposed to be politically educating him. You feel me? Like yeah. we have, he's in very close proximity to me and he still, like he, he didn't really understand what misogyny meant. I'm like, my nigga, like, wow, I'm failing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't think it was an excuse. I think it was like clear and based on the conversation that we had, I'm like, yo, he's not using an excuse. Like he dead ass didn't Doesn't know see, what these words mean. He dead ass yeah. didn't see how. I'm like, how am I out here talking this shit? And the nigga who, some niggas that's closest to me don't understand the definition of things, right? Yeah. Um, and so that that let me know that I wasn't being as effective with my political education as I would like to be, and I think that's a result of you know the echo chambers that I've created for myself via Twitter and via organizing spaces. Right? Like it's so easy for us to be like, oh, we radicalize, we radicalize in the minds of people that already have access to some of the information that we talk about, right? It's like with PBO, we could be like... All Niggas right. are usually joining PBO with some type with some of... Some type understand- of baseline understanding, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And not just a baseline understanding with also a, another community outside of what we have, that outside right. of PBO that's kind of already touching on some of the things that we talk about, whether that's the families that they come from, whether that's a lot of... A lot of our volunteers are in college. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like whether that's the family they're coming from, the communities that they're in via the academy, you know what I'm saying? So like it's easy for us to be like, Oh, we doing hella good work with hella black, which like, again, I'm not about to downplay none of the shit we do. I think hella black is dope. I think PBO is dope. But like, as like nigga, we not touching the hood as as a, as effectively, and that's shown yeah. by niggas that we, you know, my cousin, your friend, not having a clear understanding of what misogyny is. Yeah, you feel me? I know we t- and I think I know we do the podcast, and that's the form of political education. We send it to niggas, we post it, but. If what, are those, that's like, next what are those to regular us, conversations you feel that we have? What is a regular? Shit? You feel yeah. me? And I just trying to figure out like, so what does that look like for us now? Yeah. No, I mean, you know, I've, I've, I've ran into these situations as well, right? Where, you know, someone will, you know, come up to me and be like, or you know, someone like, hey, like this nigga over here, he's helping misogynistic. Like, can you go talk to him? You know, usually it's like black women coming to me type situation where like, yeah. all right, go talk to this nigga, right? And I remember, you know, having that conversation, starting to have it, and he's like, bro, I don't, everyone is calling me a misogynist. I don't even know what the word is meant, and no one has even explained it to me. So, and there, I'm like, damn, bro, like, I failed, too, because, like, I, we haven't even had that conversation on even what the word misogyny means, or misogynist. Like, niggas don't even know what the word is, so it's like, and then if you just, which I understand, if you just coming at a nigga, right, I'm like, oh, right, fuck you, you a misogynist, like, a nigga might not just respond well to that. <laughs> Or even want to learn. You know what I mean? So it's like you have to break down that 
what it actually means to him and, right. and, and put that labor in. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like, it's this weird situation where it's like this behavior or like what happened isn't good, right? But how do we have those conversations? You know what I'm saying? Because it's like if we are trying to address the harm that was caused, we have to look at it from all angles. You know what I mean? Like, all right, why does this person not understand it? Now how do we, you know, simplify it and make it understandable? You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, I'm I'm thinking about the situation you're talking about, and it's a very nuanced situation because, like, like, you know, you're talking about women coming to you, right? Like, it's not her... It's not her. It's honestly not her job to be like, I'm about to explain misogyny to this nigga. Facts. Like she's the victim in the situation. You know right. what I'm saying? And but as a result of that, like you see some of the discourse on Twitter, niggas like, I ain't teaching you. Go go Google like that. You feel me? And that's why I like. But I think that's where niggas like us yeah. supposed to come in, right? To you can like, Google misogyny in a, a video of Umar dispelling the myth of misogyny in the black community might pop up, and then yeah. you just giving them more clips. You feel me? Of ammunition for them to come at you. <laughs> you know. So I think it's that. That fine line, yeah. But if like we talking about being an ally, nigga, being in solidarity, that's where we come in. Like, hey, bro, like misogyny is, you know, talking about the hatred of women, bro. And this shows up in the way you, you know, these words potentially, right? The way you you view them, you feel me? Like yeah. the type of you know conversation that you might have with with a woman, right? Like things like that, you know. Because I don't expect victims to be patient yeah. with the folks that are perpetuating harm. I don't like. I don't. I don't expect that. But Especially I, if you experience misogyny your whole life, bro. Yeah. You're like, fuck, nigga. I do not have time to sit down at Starbucks and to tell you why you a misogynist. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I do expect like the community to exhibit some sort of patience. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because definitely. I mean, there's, yeah. and that's the conversation folks don't want to have. You know, like I and I, I get it, but I, I do think we live in a time where people just be so quick to. Just to, write people to off, write people bro. off, and I a lot of that shit was starting to wear off on me. Like even the way that I engaged, that I that I engage with folks when I'm like calling them out or calling them in, it's like it's we can't use the same exact language that we are using. You know what I mean? Like, it's like what, we're hip to social justice language, nigga. Like we're hip to the academy. And I you think, feel me? Yeah. But we shouldn't be using that type of language. You feel me? To like look down on niggas in and a sense. Not and even it's not even looking down on them, but it's like, bro, a lot of that shit isn't that accept. Inex- isn't that accessible? You feel me? The way shit is explained, bro. In my opinion, uh, that, yeah, I know. agree. And it's not even just the language, right? I think it's also like, you know how, you know, like I'll be a sounding board, not even a sounding board, right? Like I think by the work that we do and how we try to align and support. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I had a conversation with that nigga E yesterday, and we were talking about, um, you know, maybe possibly removing like ally and solidarity from you know our vocabulary and that's a whole nother situation right but i just think that um my point is um no nah, i lost my fucking train of thought what we, talk, we was talking about uh just language not, and yeah so it's not even just the language you know what i'm saying I, I think it's also um damn nigga i'm fucking having a blank the language and what else we talk about the language. I had a point. This is why I was gonna write it down, but then you stopped talking, and I was like, "Oh, nah, I can I can jump in this shit." So it's not even about the language. Oh, here we go. It's not even just about the language. It's about also how you come with it. Because I think sometimes I'll talk to you know like black black women. I'll talk to um, you know queer folks, trans folks, and you'll you know like I can hear the sense of anger, and then I go take that anger and I fucking push it on the niggas that I'm correcting yeah. for being homophobic, for being transphobic, yeah. for being anti-fat, and it's just like they like nigga, what the fuck like. That's not gonna work. If it's kind of productive. It's kind of productive as yeah. fuck. No matter how valid the anger may be, and that's why, bro. Like teaching is not easy, bro. It's not. And people like to get on Twitter and act like political education is so easy, and that it's such a okay, a, a one size fix fix all type of situation, bro. It's like that's how I can tell. Like even the way it some is niggas, when you're around like minded people. Yeah, it but is. when you so have when to you get want- out of your comfort zone, and we got to understand that the masses of black people are living in colonized communities, went to colonized education spaces, you feel me, and was indoctrinated into these colonial belief systems, bro. So we're talking about years of indoctrination into patriarchy, years of uh, indoctrination into er- internalized anti-blackness, colorism, right, classism, right? We're talking about years of that, so it's like, it's going to take some time for us to re-educate our own people, and... We have to do that, period. You can't just be like, nah, I ain't going to talk to him. Or you going to, you feel me, pull up on a fucking corner and be like, nigga, if you don't know this shit, nigga, you, you, you was canceled, bro. You out, bro. We ain't even talk. Like, that shit ain't going to work either, bro. Like, and that's how you can see, even on Twitter, some of these conversations niggas be having, bro. It's like, I could tell you don't be outside. 
I can tell you you don't be outside talking to people, bro. You be, you know, saying hood, hood this, hood that, bro. But niggas, are you actually outside in the hood actually talking to niggas, bro? Because I guarantee you if you're trying to get your point across like that, it's going to be a problem. Bro, I'm like... And it, that's that's what it is, bro. Like, you can't just go... I, I can't, you know... I might peep something and be like, hey, you feel me? Like, bro, you ain't got to say it like that, bro. You got to think about this, bro. You know what I'm saying? But if you go like... Fight or fight <laughs> type yeah. situation, bro. Either a nigga going... Turn their mind completely off, and it's something I had to learn as a you know, as an educator too. Like in the classroom, bro, it's like I can't. I'm having students coming at age eighteen, age seventeen. You feel me? Just getting like a lot of them is just getting politicized to blackness. You feel me? So it's like, yeah, some of them niggas think I'm crazy when I'm talking about this radical shit. I got to remind myself, nigga, where was I when I was eighteen, bro? You know what I mean? Like niggas might not understand that shit, especially if you know. You know, you believe some of the shit your parents believe or something like that. And, you know, you take you take personal attacks. You, know, I mean, you think it's about is, you. You know, it's, it's like, bro, it's, it's a process. We're dealing with colonized minds, my nigga. Like, that's that's what the that's yeah. what the fact is. And if we're talking about, nigga, racism, you feel me? we experiencing racism, nigga. It's all this other shit was built off colonization, too. Gender, sexuality, ability, disability, right? Like, yep. all those things is a product of this colonial violence, right? So, we have to have those conversations and... Realistically, all the niggas who is like critiquing other niggas all the time, bro. So you got some work to do too. Ain't nobody's politics is ever perfect. Our politics sure as hell ain't perfect, bro. We live. You feel me? It's like niggas is still trying to grow. Niggas is still having to unlearn shit, relearn shit. You know, check your fucking feelings sometimes. If your feelings is coming up about a certain certain uh topic, like you got to really sit with it. But I think to your point, bro, it's like niggas really you have to have a conversation. Where you got to meet somebody at a certain level, bro. And it's not even on no, like, fucking, like, patronizing. Like, oh, I went to the academy. I know this shit. It's like, nah. It's like, bro, we just have to have an accessible conversation. You know what I mean? Because niggas can learn, bro. <laughs> I mean, if Huey Newton literally was illiterate and then was able to, you know, become who he was. And, of course, he had a lot of, you know, shortcomings and violence and shit like that. But, like, mm-hmm. nigga couldn't read, bro. You feel me? Couldn't read. And ended up becoming a PhD professor. You feel me? You know, getting a PhD from Santa Cruz. Yeah. You see Santa Cruz, like, niggas can grow. It's just like, are you giving people the space to grow? Are you actually creating a space where you can talk about those things, bro? And you have to approach it from different angles, bro. It has to be different angles. You can't just be like, I just read this book. Like, yeah, read the book and then let's talk about this book. What what came up for you? You know what I mean? And by no, by no admission are we saying like like i just want folks to understand i'm not saying that like victims need to be patient no nah. i'm saying like the folks that not at all are trying to align themselves with again with like solidarity and allyship of the victims right so like for men it's important that men check other men i don't expect, yeah. I, I i i just need to change my patience yeah with it. definitely i need to change my patience and i think when it comes to radicalizing the minds of niggas in, in the ghetto we fell in like yeah. and that's what like niggas don't want to have that conversation about how we literally fell in the minds of the ghetto. Like niggas have created these situations where again they bounce creating echo chambers and being around like minded people will have you thinking you your impact is greater than it actually is. Like period. Start break. start changing niggas who you feel me. Like if we talk like nigga, if we say all of us or none of us, nigga, we was talking about We're talking about them niggas in the trenches. We too. talking about the niggas in the trenches, and I think that's where this like Niggas say they don't fuck with this talent to 10th type of identity, bro. But a lot of niggas' talent to 10th should be coming out. Especially when it comes, you know, to political education. You feel me? It's like, oh, we, we gonna forget about the hood, nigga. We gonna forget about the ghetto, nigga. We gonna forget about the, the people there, bro. There ain't no revolution without the hood. I'm telling Period, you right nigga. now. There ain't gonna, no revolution with no street niggas either. It ain't no revolution without street niggas. They're gonna be the niggas who need to bust them straps. I, I didn't see, like, bro, I've been in organizing spaces. Niggas be want to be talked this like, be talking revolution, like nigga, guns are going to be involved in the revolution. Bodies will have to drop, and we're gonna need niggas that have conditioned themselves to do that to be front line with us. Period, point blank. I can't like that's just like so. It's it's counterproductive in so many ways. It's counterproductive in you bringing your politics from theory to practice, yeah. and it's counterproductive in actually creating a, a society, a community to where we can actually forge a revolution. If period, that's what bro. niggas trying to do, there is no revolution about without this niggas, like, bro. Street niggas is just unpoliticized warriors, bro. You, you politicize a street nigga, bro, and look what you happen. You know, the Black Panther Party nigga, George Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas who was in the streets, bro. It's like them niggas was the ones you feel me really ten toes down. You know what I'm saying with the shit. Like can't talk about revolution and 
Yo, Revolution has a fucking class bracket. <laughs> I mean, because you, you know, niggas say that, hey, Bernie Sanders, you feel me, and all this other shit, and then like turn around and do some of that same type of Bernie Sanders type shit. But they revolution, bro. Niggas like to use, you know, their, I guess, their alignment with niggas in the hood as like honestly as social capital. Because like that's, but honestly, it's wild how your work in the hood is still the the like I guess the bar for radical politics, but how so many people aren't doing it. Like that's still the bar. Like with niggas, but oh, if you ain't doing no work in the hood, your shit don't matter. But how many niggas are actually engaging hood niggas? Like I, I are, are engaged in the hood. I don't get it. Like how we can still be preaching this is the bar, but allowing folks to not live up to that bar twenty four seven, bro. Facts. Like how like you realize like this is the bar, right? Niggas, but oh, y'all niggas ain't never outside. Y'all don't be in the trenches. Y'all don't do. It. But like that's clearly the bar, and we still allow niggas to function into 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 be thought leaders that don't do no work in it. I just it don't make no sense to me. Like that's contradictory as fuck. Yeah. I mean, I, I think in we live in a, a time where all this shit is contradictions to be honest, bro, in terms of organizing breasts, like you don't really have no very few organizations that is actually in the trenches, quote unquote, or actually talking with people like that, bro. It's like you it's like you just graduate college and then you're only organizing with niggas who graduated from college. You doing something wrong, nigga. Because the hood is still the epicenter of all the, of all the movement. All work. this violence. Because it's where the violence is happening and it's where niggas is. It's where niggas is getting shot. Mike Brown shot in the hood. You feel me? Oscar Grant shot in the hood. It's wild how much so much. Yvette Henderson shot in the hood, bro. This shit ain't happening. You feel me, nigga? This shit is happening here, nigga. It's wild house. So like, how you not going to engage with that, bro? If you, and it's, I think, and then niggas think the hood don't know what the hood need to, bro. That's what it is, bro. In some ways, bro, it's like niggas be like, oh, we we know these theories, bro. You need to use these theories. I'm like, bro, a lot of these niggas is using these theories, bro. You just don't know what they saying, bro, because you don't speak the language of the people, bro. You speak a whole different type of language. <laughs> niggas is talking about intersectionality, bro. They just might not have said matrix of domination. That's that's period, bro. Yeah. Niggas is talking about you feel me, self defense. Nigga just might not say the word self defense. <laughs> So I think these buzzwords that have become, you know, so popular on Twitter, have been, you know, so popular in the academy. It's like, bro, you feel me? It's like that. The way that is explained isn't the same. The way niggas is gonna explain it, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think that's that's a problem in itself. What I was just thinking is, it's wild how like, you know, like because we talk about this is where the violence is happening, right? In in, in hoods across America, right? And when the violence initially happens, like the folks that are that are mostly impacted, right? That community, they tend to be the faces and the voices of 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 the movement that's that's taking place until the movement becomes profitable. Like you see it there, you see the pictures of the of the of the the hundreds of names that sh- of faces that you can't put names to because they're not the ones that's on the podium. You hear the voices at the at, at the rallies, you hear the chants, you hear the cries. Yeah. But those aren't the voices that are propelled. Like they were able to put their bodies and lives on the line, but they don't get to. And if we look Speak at themselves. what happened in Ferguson, it was hood niggas, nigga. It was street niggas who was fighting for Mike Brown, nigga. But who was the voice? Who became the voices from Ferguson? DeRay. Nigga, not even from Ferguson. Sean King. Black Lives Matter. Nigga, we don't even, <laughs> Sean King's birth certificate, nigga. His, both his parents are white. That's. <laughs> but like, these are the niggas when you think about the Black Lives Matter, Matter movement. movement. You, you know, even the fucking, like, you know, the people who was credited with the, the founding of it, right? Them niggas ain't in the hood, bruh. <laughs> while motherfuckers from while while the on the ground organizers in Ferguson Are continue to, you feel me, continue to die Locked niggas up. in jail. New generation of political prisoners, right? But nigga when the bag is associated with it, bruh, they co opted. You feel me? And that's what we see is like all these talking heads of this movement, bruh, look at their resume, bruh. These niggas is resume activists. Look at their motherfucking resume. They heads of nonprofits. The heads of these quote unquote movement net nonprofits, right? Mm-hmm. They're doing these speaking deals. They're doing these book deals. But what community are they from? What community claims them? You know what I'm saying? And that that's that's the shit is like, <laughs> and we and we and we see it. We see it happen. So, what I what I really hope people take away from this shit is like, you got to center the hood. You got to be patient with the hood. Like you, you really, you really got to. Because if you claim to understand the way violence works, 
understand that the hood is the epicenter of that violence that you claim to understand so well. Of, of violence that is coming from multiple different ways. Whether it's education. Whether it's environmental racism. Niggas, you feel me? It's like Flint still don't got water, nigga. Flint a hood. <laughs> Here in West Oakland, nigga, McClyman's High School has been closed. Even though West Oakland is increasingly being gentrified. Mac was closed before the coronavirus because of toxic chemicals. Because of lead. Yep. And think about what those what that does to kids, young kids, lead poisoning. Those toxic chemicals chemicals. You know, it's like this is the epicenter of this shit, bro. And niggas need to stop with that whole <laughs> fucking bourgeois elitist attitude. Cut should that shit out, bro. Like, That's um, what it is, bro. You you niggas you niggas is acting like you hate the talented tenth, but you is the talented tenth, nigga. You act like surveillance in your own community. And that's where I think... Not even your own community, if we keep it in the band. I'm checking myself on this shit, because I, I seen I was... I seen I was... I was falling victim to that, to that thought but it, process. But it's, it's important to check ourselves. Yeah. But also, like, these, this is what we're also, like, I guess, up against in some ways, because... If we're talking about activism and organizing, we know that it's looking a certain type of way in some ways in the movement or in organizing. You know what I'm saying? Like, but those spaces usually are spaces of privilege. You know, even though you have marginalized identities in those spaces, right? It's usually spaces of privilege where that shit is showing up. Where niggas like, nah, we ain't doing this. You feel me? It's like, so it's, it's, it can be hard not to fall victim, but that's literally the, you know, space we're in where niggas is judging every single word you put out yeah and putting their own understanding of what you think not even asking a question you feel me and trying to gain more understanding about oh this nigga said this one thing and like we in that type of <laughs> whether we like it or not nigga that's just that's what's going on yeah. on the internet in some ways or black twitter but you know black twitter ain't real life bro <laughs> you know what i mean yeah it really is not and know? i it's, and that's bro. The more time we spend out, uh, nigga, we outside with it. So it's like that's where we're able to be checked. But imagine if niggas ain't outside. Like we, we can go tweet whatever we want, <laughs> and then go walk to where we doing our program at, and it's a different reality. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to <laughs> move different, and, and you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I, I'm telling you, I was, I was falling victim to that shit as I was like, I know, have to developing a follow, I have to. De- quote unquote developing a following. You know, starting to engage on Twitter where I'm just like, yeah, you start to just assume because everybody preaching the same politics that the practices are looking the same, and not just that, you also start to like uphold whatever standard is the norm in the organizing sector of Twitter as you know whatever that standard is. You start to think that that's the norm, that that's what's right, and I realize yeah. like, man, a lot of these niggas ain't. Like, I'm telling you, bro. I don't even you feel me. Wouldn't even be knowing what, what a lot of niggas is doing. You know what I'm saying? Because again, Twitter is a place where we can where we can craft our, you know, bits and pieces of our lives, which is why it's able for us to for me to think that like for me to fall victim to my own thinking of I'm out here being super effective as a political educator. Not again. I think we're doing great work. It's just but I do to think niggas are failing. Niggas can grow. You feel me? We could do a better job of radicalizing the hood and the niggas that we around on the. That are from these basis. places, you feel me? Like, yeah. you can just do a better job. Period. It's a com- so. I think I think the other part of that is because I don't know something that I was thinking was all right. I want to be patient, but what does it mean to be like? I think there's a difference between being patient and complicit with stuff, right? And then I was talking to E, and that nigga was like, "Bro, you always gonna be complicit. You got to just understand that." Um, but I think I don't know if you have any thoughts to provide on. Like when do you go from being patient with someone to like I don't know if I guess complicit is the word, but also just like because in terms of like when you talk you talk about Huey, but that nigga wanted to learn, wanted to be better. Yeah. Like you can try to educate up somebody as much as well, you man, want, yeah. and they just it take two. There's some people who don't want it, who who are you know just so egotistical and caught up in their ways that niggas don't want to change. Some of them niggas. There ain't no changing them. You're just gonna have to deal with them like an op would, like you would an op. You feel me? But I, so like it's, it's in, in some ways. But I think people, yeah, and like I think that's that's something that you like the Umar's nigga. There ain't no changing that nigga. Yeah, but okay, so the Charlemagne, that nigga, no changing that. nigga. The conversation that I wanted to have is 
I think all, that's that's a common response. Is like, oh, you got to deal with you feel me, all skin and kin type shit, or like some yeah. folks just gonna be your op. But like, what does that look like when it's your close friends and or family? You know what I'm saying? Because like, you're not gonna just you're not gonna deal with them the way you're gonna deal with op. You're gonna love niggas from a distance, and I think that's a conversation that has been completely lost in terms of politics as of late. Is just niggas being like, oh, you got to treat like well, that nigga acting like an op, he an op, nigga. Like <laughs> everybody can't come, everybody yeah. can't come to freedom. It's like, okay, so what does that look like when that's your brother? Like <laughs> so, what is that? You have a younger brother. You feel me? It's like yeah. this nigga just like, nah, I don't, I don't think gay people should exist. You're not about to just smoke that nigga, like, <laughs> like that's, and that's just the fact. But a lot of yeah. or, the way people be talking on Twitter is like, oh, you gotta just, you feel me? Like everybody can't come with us to freedom. It's like, all right, that's like, again, I've, I've, I've just been realizing like people like to talk a lot about things, but it's like, what is that gonna look like in practice, my nigga? Like yeah. that, that theory is easy to push. That all right, everybody can't come. Yeah. But it's like not. Nah, what is that going to look like? And it's something that's just been lost in the conversations. Facts. I mean, I think it looks like constantly trying to educate niggas. You know what I mean? And then like you have to approach it. Like as an educator, nigga, like I, you can't treat every student the same because <laughs> not every student is the same, bro. You know, you have to approach it in different ways. You might have to like, all right, what's one thing you got in common with somebody? You know what I mean? Like. Outside of politics and what's one thing you can come, all right, you build off of that. All right, for sure. Have you thought about this? Or you find out what a nigga like. <laughs> like, all right, yeah. You like this? Okay, well, you hear about that? What happened? You know, you use different situations to start having those conversations. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like like music or something. Like, okay, like you, you fuck with P. Diddy, but your other favorite artist is this person. You know what P. Diddy did to this nigga? Okay, yeah, but what are these other things that are showing up, you feel me, that caused P. Diddy to do this type of situation? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas, oh, like, you fuck with Jay Z, bro. It's like, but you say you hate you hate uh, informants. <laughs> like Jay Z, what do we had an informant for the DEA working in Rock Nation? Yeah. So like, I think things like that is where you can start approaching it. You know, and, like connecting dots like that. Like, oh, okay, and, and exposing people to those contradictions. But that shit is tiring, bro. Like, I think it's especially when I started getting into this work. It's like. Some of my siblings didn't really approve of it. Like, didn't really understand it. You know, but it's like five years later, like, I could see niggas' minds changing. You know what I mean? Like, yep. to even to a point where I'm like, I'm having a conversation with my sister yesterday, and she said, Oh, yeah, I want to do a yoga class, and all the benefits is going to benefit PBO. You know, shit like that. Like, my brother gave a donation to PBO. Yeah. Like, he used to be super on his capitalist shit. And, like, he sees the issues with shit now. You know what I mean? But it's yeah. like, it's those painful conversations. It's those conversations that don't leave you feeling good. It has, it's those conversations that make you want to fight a nigga. Yeah. And that's going to come up, but that's the ugly part of education. That's the ugly part of political education, you know, in my opinion. It shit ain't as sweet. Again, this is like <laughs> the way that you, the way that political education as a theory is talked about online in an organized space well, well you could just in tell, non-radical you could just tell that like niggas this. aren't actually doing political education because if you actually are educating niggas you know it don't work that way bro I remember one time I had a student he came in his first year he said I want to be a cop I was like alright and I told him I said by the end of this year my goal is to convince you not to be a cop that shit took a lot of time nigga a lot of effort a lot of you know and at the end of the year he's like hey Blake I kind of see what you were saying now like I, I, I get it I understand it he ain't, he ain't gonna be a cop no more yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean But that like Nigga that took a lot of patience <laughs> A lot of fucking patience Yeah A, <laughs> a disclaimer that I wanna put out is I'm again I'm not acting I'm not asking victims to be Patient with motherfuckers Cause yeah. there, there's a time like You know if you got You know A qu- queer youth Living in a home That is Completely not safe to them. I'm not asking them to be fucking patient With people that are You know a, Committing Causing violence. them hella harm yeah. You know what I'm saying Like nah I'm not, I'm not saying that Period Um so yeah, I think it's just important to again. These are all like very complicated and nuanced discussions, but in a, I just think we live in a time where folks are. If that's not your situation, I yeah. think you see people being so quick to write off others for not having the same way of thinking when they don't even have access to the same information or haven't, you know, been or haven't been exposed to the same amount of information for the same amount of times. Yeah, because I see niggas wanting to grow. You know, like I see it and you can see it in people sometimes. So I think it's just continuing that. But like I definitely I feel like I've seen people want to grow. People ask questions, you know, so it's like, how do we build off of that shit? Yeah. You know, like, 
you know, I, I really, I've seen it. I've seen, we, we are also examples of growth, nigga. Like, I saw my about like when we gave first, up on me, you feel me, five years ago, met, last nigga. year, nigga. <laughs> like, <laughs> people would have, you know, I'm also very grateful that, nigga, I learned, you know, I'm lucky that queer folks have also have given me grace. I'm privileged. So with that privilege, I got to use that to educate other folks. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm privileged that black women get, gave me grace and allowed me to learn, bro. You know what I mean? If I didn't have those type of relationships with folks, like, my politics would not be here. Yeah. You know? So at the same time, it's like, I think Ant was saying it on the episode that we had them on. It was like, there has to be, like, it was either Ant. Yeah, I think it was Ant. Like, some niggas have to like tell us. You feel me? Otherwise, we we're not gonna learn either. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we have to learn from somewhere too. So I'm grateful for those folks. You know, I, it, I, yeah. it's like, but I get it's like that. Health. There has to be a balance. Yeah. Because I'm not gonna be able to learn if a black woman isn't talking to me. You know what I'm saying? Or like if a, a black trans. I think person, you can have. I you think know? you can. So I like, think you can have boundaries. I think boundaries are super yeah. important, and you should know your boundaries, and and people should respect your boundaries. But I think some folks are just out here like, oh, if nigga don't get it the first. Time first two times first like nigga it took me a like it took me nigga, it a t- very long time. It took me a long time to understand what intersectionality meant. Like, shout out Dr. J, Dr. J Finley. Like, I literally had to go to office hours because like it shit did not make sense to me. Like in my mind, like I did it. Like, what do you mean? Like, so oppression is here, it's here, it's here, it's here and here, and then it like this dot right here is where it all intersects. Like, what what do you mean? You know? And they were like, you understand it. Like they were telling me, like you understand it, you just don't understand it from this type of concept. And I was lucky. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I get it now. You know what I mean? But yeah. it's like niggas got to educate, bro. Yeah, and I'm I'm grateful for the folks that that took time with me, and I'm going to continue. I'm going to work at being more patient because the last yeah. few times I had to check niggas. I'm like, bro, I went about this shit the completely the wrong way. And and I can't be mad if they, about, if they um, deterred from the ways I came at them yeah. and like are just you know damn. Then they might be bitter. Yeah, like or turned off by the politic. You. Turned off by the and politic. You losing mm-hmm. somebody to the movement. So I don't know. Niggas have to have those conversations, bro. And especially like if we having these conversations, it's like if you're non-black and listening to this, bro. Like you, you all can't be fucking just trying to distance yourself from your white cousin or your fucking you and know racist, fucking subtweeting racist or roommate. posting you know pics, I mean? posting like, shit on Facebook. Go talk to the motherfuckers. Go yeah. teach them something. Go teach them because if we having these are our, our own conversations. You know what I mean about what like what we doing, nigga. You, you can't just distance yourself from your racist cousin, nigga. You need to make sure that person is unlearning as much as possible. This is what people need to accept. You may be doing great work, and there are probably a bunch of other ways that you are failing. Period, point blank. Like it's I, part of being human, nigga. Like, <laughs> bro, a lot of people are just aren't. They a lot of people themselves. I think what it takes is realizing you yourself aren't as close to the politics that you preach as you think you are, or as that you claim to be. And that's something I've been Thanks. having to. Even Come I, I, I gotta it. check myself too. Like, all right, yeah, that actually probably was a, a bit misogynistic where I'm coming from, and I gotta sit with it. It's just, <laughs> and I, you know, it's like as much as I'm reading, as much as I'm trying to check myself, nigga, I'm still gonna have moments where, you know, I might have bad fucking thoughts or say something that's out of pocket. I think people and I gotta take, check myself. Yeah. and I gotta grow from that. I think know? people take I'm learning and unlearning too loosely and don't realize like, yo, that shit is like. We will always be constantly. There's not going to be a day where we, as men, no matter how radical we get, wake up and we're not misogynistic anymore, and we're th- or that we don't benefit from misogyny. There's not going to be a day we wake up where don't we're not homophobic. homophobic thoughts. You feel me? Like you go, you're, you're just niggas need to accept that. Niggas need to stop acting like they fucking saints. Cause we not nigga. <laughs> we trying our best and we trying to do better. But at the same time, bro, niggas ain't never going to be perfect, bro. Be patient never. with niggas. Be patient with yourself. <laughs> Learn, keep trying your best to live to to put your politics into practice, and you know that's a great great starting point and a great ending point for us. Yeah, revolution coming from the hood, bro. <laughs> Period. Hella black episode seventy four. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that gonna pick up on the speaker? Because that's gonna be a problem. Okay. But go ahead. <laughs> that, that's it. Now I'm nervous because I don't want to make it into the bloopers, bro. The bloopers are funny. Get your merch. Merch, 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 merch.